Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Norwalk, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to the Acts Ministry podcast. We're finishing up on uh, Acts chapter 2. We're talking about the day of Pentecost when it was fully come, and we're talking about this because on tomorrow is Pentecost Sunday. That's Pentecost Sunday. That is 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we've been talking about why it's so important. So feel free to go back and listen to any of the podcasts and to catch up, especially the last, uh, I would say, the last seven days, if you want to talk about Pentecost and see what why it is so important, why that history is so important. Because to just step into something and not know the history of it you don't have the you don't have the real you don't get the whole mm, or the power of it um, because you lack knowledge, and when there is a there is a lack of knowledge, the Bible says his people are destroyed. So you can be deceived because you don't know what you should know. Now we talked about on on yesterday how when they began to speak in tongues, there was two schools of thoughts. One said basically that uh, they are drunk. It's because they're drunk, and other says it's from God. You can almost say one says from God, one said that it was it was from the devil or whatever. But Peter was able to get up and explain to them from the Bible, from the book of Joel. I'm saying Bible, the scroll, but he was able to to explain to them that this was already written. And again, think about it. History is no more than prophecy. When you prophesy, you're really just telling somebody about their history. It just hadn't taken place yet. And that's a powerful thing. So here's Peter. He began to preach to them and tell them. And about 3,000 of them are going to come and be saved. But I want to take you through some of Peter's sermon. The first sermon that was preached on the day of Pentecost. The first sermon that was preached in the church. Uh, Peter's sermon. I, I want to just take you through it, and and help you help all of us to see how important history is. Just how important history is, and and once we see that, it it it, it changes things. It ch- should change us. It should motivate us to, to just know why things are the way they are, and why things are happening the way they are, and be able to explain it. Be able to explain it. The, the Apostle Paul tells us that we should be able to give anybody a reason of the hope that is within us. I believe that was Paul that said that. Uh, we should be able to tell them. We should be able to explain it to them. Not just tell them you ought to believe it, but be able to tell them and explain it to them. Now, watch what Peter does. He has these. He has two schools of thoughts there. And some saying it's, it's because they're drunk. And some saying it's from God. But but listen to what Peter says here. And this should help us because I believe that sometimes we want people just to believe us. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Axe Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in axeministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. Now, watch what Peter does. He has these. He has two schools of thoughts there. And some saying it's, it's because they're drunk, and some saying it's from God. But, but listen to what Peter says here. And this should help us, because I believe that sometimes we won't, people just to believe us because they should believe us because we know it's the truth but we haven't shared enough information with them to convince them that is the truth 
And the truth of the matter is this. We didn't just believe when we heard. We had to study. We had to be like the Berean saints. We studied. We searched the scriptures to find out if this was so. So here, notice how Peter approaches these group of people, these group of religious people. Keep that in mind. These, these are devout men. We read that. These are devout men. They come from a long, long way, ways off. They had spent their money. They, they, they had sacrificed to get here. This is Pentecost. So Peter is going to address them, but notice how he addresses them. So I'm gonna, I want to read that for you in Acts chapter 2. If we start at verse number 22, and I want to read down where you can see some of Peter's sermon. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David spake concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer that Holy One to see corruption. Thou hast been made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Now, I want, I want just to stop at verse 31. We start at verse 22, and I want to stop there and just kind of talk about that because Peter is preaching, and he says some things. He began to talk about Jesus' life. He, become, he began to talk about some of the things that he did. And, he, and he's proven to them that Jesus was the Christ. He began to talk about things that he knew they knew. He said, you knew about the miracles, the signs, the wonders. He says, you, you knew that. And then he told them about uh, the determined counsel and the foreknowledge of God, how Jesus was crucified. Verse 23 said, by wicked hands have crucified and slain them. But he says in verse 24, whom God raised up. So now he's talking about the, he's talking about the crucifixion. He's talking about the burial of Christ. And he says now he's talking about the resurrection. He says God raised him up because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Now, I want you to understand this. It wasn't possible for death to keep him in the ground. It was not possible. It was not possible for him to stay dead. Now, that, 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 that is very important to understand that. It was not possible. And that's important because many times we look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ and we talk about how impossible it was when we get up. No, the Bible says the impossibility was on death, hell, and the grave. Because Jesus was God incarnated in flesh. He has all power. It was not possible for death to keep him in the ground. See, now, see, Peter is teaching. He's teaching from the time that Jesus came on the earth. He's telling them about Jesus being on the earth and, about he, and how he was sent here by God. Now, in verse number 25... He began to tell him what David said. Now that's that's in the Psalms. 
He began to tell. He began to, began to talk about when David was pro, when David prophesied, because he says that David, David being a prophet, knew this, and David said that he would not leave his soul in hell, neither would he suffer that a holy one to see corruption. Jesus' body never saw corruption. So when you read this in the Psalms, it was prophecy. But here in the book of Acts, it is prophecy that has become history because it's taken place. So it is so important. If you can connect what was prophesied to what is now history, the confirming of God's word so becomes so convincing to those that don't even believe, to unbelievers, to those that doubt, but being able to take the history and show that it was prophecy. I don't know if you're getting that or not. I don't even know if you're hearing that or not. What, what Peter just did here, he went back in history and, and, and hundreds of years before Jesus was born of a virgin, and begin to talk to them about what David said. And he said, says to them that that was prophecy. Because David is still in the ground. And his body did suffer corruption. But Jesus didn't. So now he, he, he helps them understand that that was prophecy. And that's in verse 30. Look at verse 30. It says, therefore being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him. See, David knew that God couldn't lie. God has sworn to him that he was going to raise up one out of his family, out of his loins, from his DNA, and 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 he was he was he wanted wanted David knew that this history that had become this prophecy that had become history, but it depends on how you look at it. If you look at it from the perspective of David, his prophecy. If you look at it from the perspective of what Peter's talking about, it's history because it's taking place. But when you bring those two together, that is one of the most convincing witnessing tools you could have to prove the people that that God had already said it before it happened. Jesus says the same thing. I'm going to tell you before it happens. So when it does happen, you will know that I am he. I am God. So here he began to tell them that David was a prophet. In verse 31, now watch this. He he. he he brings the prophecy and the history together in verse 31. It says, he seen this before speak of the resurrection of Christ. See, at that point, it was prof at that point, it's prophesying. David is prophesying at this point that his soul was not left in hell or the grave, neither his flesh did see corruption. He prophesied this. But then in verse 32, it says, this Jesus had God raised up. Now that prophecy has become history. But prophecy, even if it become history, you don't receive the power from it unless you make the connection. Because once you make the connection, your faith should explode. And not, not just your faith should explode. Because when you see that God said it and then he brought it to pass, it should increase our faith in God, his ability to do what he has declared he can't do. So, so when we see this, as Peter is preaching, then Peter go, goes a little further, and he, he says to them in verse 36. This is what he says to them in verse 36. And this is, this is, this is very powerful. Uh, just, just before we get to verse 36, I want to give you some more history, though, because it's history in this text. In, in verse 33, it says this. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. Now, this is, this is very powerful. David speaking, and he says, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit on my right hand. Now, when you look in the book of Hebrews, and you look what the book of Hebrews says, in essence, what David said, is God said unto God, sit on my right hand. Now, I know that kind of blows you away, and, and, and I understand that. But, but in Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 8, 
you will read the same expression there, Hebrews 1 and 8, where it talks about when the Lord, the Lord God, says unto his angels, they minister in spirit, but unto the Son of God, he says, Thou throne, O God. So if God called the Son God, then he's got to be God. But when you look at this, it is important because this is the scripture that Jesus used to silence all the religious people of his day. All, all those religious people that were constantly tempting him and asking him questions, trying to trap him. Jesus asked them a question concerning this verse. What he said to them is, who son is Christ? Of course, the answer was, he's the son of David. They knew that. But then Jesus says to them, if he's the son of David, why did David call him Lord? Now, just think about that. If he's, if he's the son of David, why would David call him God? Just, just think about that. That's, that's the power. And, and from that point, they were completely, totally silent. They couldn't say anything else. You know why? Because of lack of knowledge, because of ignorance. They didn't get it. If they could have got that, they would have never crucified Jesus Christ. If they had understood that, they would have never did. They would have never did. Uh, uh, did. They would have never did what they did. But they didn't understand that because they weren't in tune and didn't understand history. History. History is nothing more than, especially when we're talking about biblical history, it's nothing more than prophecy that has been fulfilled. So he, he says that to them. He says that to them. And he says in, in verse 36, when he heard all of this, this whole sermon that Peter preached, verse 36 says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made the same Jesus, whom you crucify, both Lord and Christ. He says that these murderers, he said, you killed Christ. He was the Christ. God has made him, made this same Jesus. He's both Lord and Christ. It says in verse 37, Now when he heard this, they was pricked in their heart, said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? This is, a, this is the most, one of the most simple scriptures in all of, the, in all of, in all of canon, in all of the Bible. They asked them, what did they need to do? What do we need to do? We have crucified the Lord of glory. What do we need to do to be saved? Verse 38 is very simple. Then Peter said unto them, repent. You need to be godly sorry for what you've done. You need to repent for that. Then he says, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now when Peter got through preaching this, the Bible says that he, he went on with many other words and exhorted them. But that same day. Verse 41, and said, Then they that gladly received this word were baptized, and that same day there was added unto them about 3,000 souls. So when we look at this, and we look at the power of history, understanding that it was once prophecy, and we bring those together, it caused an explosion in our souls and in our faith. Brothers and sisters, tomorrow is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. I want you to walk into Pentecost Sunday with a level of knowledge and understanding what happened 50 days after the resurrection like you've never had before. God bless you, and we will be talking to you on Pentecost Sunday and telling you the direction that the church needs to go in and what God decided about the church when he set in motion to create this entity, this, this, his body on earth that we call the church. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. 
The Axe Church is located at 1423 Inglewood Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. I, I disrespected my parents at, at home, sir. I've been more of a leader than a follower. I've been trying to help others to stay on the right track. Doing good is not really as hard as you think it is. The Arkansas Youth Challenge is enrolling for young people 16 to 18 years old. If you're having trouble in school or at home, call 1-800-814-8453. We support second chances.